Hey, what's up? It's Michael with Color Cubic, and today I'm going to walk you through how to create a 3D custom package design utilizing Cinema 4D, Expresso and Cinema 4D, Adobe Illustrator, and Adobe Photoshop. So by the time we're done, we're going to get something that kind of looks like this. All right, let's get to it. So I'm going to jump into Illustrator, and right away, I already have my canvas predefined as 10 inches by 10 inches. Now, you don't need to follow along verbatim, but you're more than welcome to if you'd like. Uh, before we really get started, though, there's a few things I need to do. And I want to enable my ruler, and I also want to enable my grid. And I also want to come up here to view and make sure that Smart Guides and Snap to Point are both turned on. This is really an important step because, essentially, we'll be utilizing guides to define the shape of our package. And we'll also be utilizing the guides because those individual components that make up our package, we want them to be adjacent to one another. So we want them to be touching, but we don't want them to overlap or be slightly apart. So the snap to guides or snap to point and smart guides, that's really going to ensure that uh, they are adjacent and they do snap in place. So we also want to come over here to layers and I'm just going to create a new layer and I'm going to rename it to guides. And I'm also going to lock my first layer. So this is where we're going to put all of our guides in that layer. Now let's go ahead and zoom in here. And if you just come over here to the left, I'm just going to click and drag from my ruler. And while I'm clicking and dragging, I'm going to hold down the shift key. And what that'll do is that'll enable the, uh, the guide to snap onto the grid. And that's precisely what we want. Let's go ahead and do that again. And I'm just going to run through this uh, sort of quickly here because we've got a lot to cover. And I don't want to spend a lot of time just creating guides. So just bear with me here while I throw this together. Again, you're more than welcome to follow along if you'd like, if you just want to watch and uh, go back and apply this to your own workflow later, you're more than welcome to do that as well. And this will definitely make sense once we get uh, all of these guides in place and we start filling in our package. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, that should that should do it. All right, so I'm just gonna lock my guides layer and I'm gonna unlock my first layer. Now, uh, before we go right into filling this in, I wanna come over here to my colors palette and by default, I have a white fill. I just wanna delete that and then I wanna to toggle my black stroke so it becomes my um, fill, so it's a black fill. And now I'm going to come up here to my shape tool and I'm going to choose my rectangle tool. And now I'm going to start filling in all of the individual components of my package. So you can see that snap to guides or snap to point and smart guides is really helping to define where uh, that shape will snap in place. And we can kind of cheat a little bit and, uh, you know, copy and paste a few of these pieces because they repeat. And that just saves us a little bit of time. <clears throat> All right. So we're pretty close to finishing. Um, I think... I'm just going to speed through this a little bit, so um, just bear with me if that's, uh, if you get lost, you can always go back and uh, just watch what I did.
All right, so we're just about done here, but I'm going to add another guide to this. Um, I just want to set this up so there's a guide right in the center of this back piece, because a lot of the time for these types of packages, for these types of designs, uh, there's a hang tag that will be incorporated into the design. And, um, you know, you don't need to do that, but I'm going to do that for this, for this uh, piece, just to kind of show you how this will work with, um, with Cinema 4D, especially when you have some pieces that are knocked out and then how that translates into Cinema 4D once we start filling in the package. So now that I have that shape here, I'm just going to round out these corners a little bit. Oops, that's a little too much. That'll, that'll do it. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to lock the layer with our package design. And with this new layer, I'm going to come over here to our shape tool and I'm going to use the rounded rectangle tool. And this is just going to help to create a uh, the distinct shape that we need here. Let me change the color of that so I can see it. And I'm going to create another one here. And just make sure that's right there. So I'm going to select both of those objects. I'm going to come over here to my Pathfinder tab, and then I'm going to select the Unite option. And what that'll do is that'll combine both of those objects into one single object. There we go, let's move that up slightly. And now I can come back down to our first layer where our package design is and unlock that. And with this new shape selected, I'm gonna come up here to Object, Path, and Divide Object Below. And now I can select that single object and just delete that. And there we go, we've got our hang tag. All right, so essentially this is all we need as far as a basic shape for a package. Now, what we want to do is we want to select this entire package. So if you're on a Mac, just uh, Command A. If you're on a PC, Control A. And then uh, click Command C if you're on a Mac, Control C if you're on a PC to copy. And now we're going to come down here to layer one where our package is and just minimize that. And come up here to that new layer that we created and then just click Command F if you're on a Mac, Control F if you're on a PC. And what that'll do is that'll paste in place this package that we just copied. Now we want to come over here to our color palette and we want to toggle the fill and stroke so that our package is now outlined. Now this is really important because this is what we're going to be utilizing in Cinema 4D to fill in our package. Cinema 4D is essentially going to take these uh, these outlines and it'll convert them into spline paths, which then we can fill in with uh, you know some kind of uh, some kind of texture. So it's a it's a really important step. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and save. I'm going to minimize that and uh, actually bring up our original package. And I'm just going to save this as new package dot AI and go ahead and just click save and that's okay. So now that we've saved that, I'm going to lock this and then I'm going to enable our outline of our package and I'm going to save a copy of this. So to save as, and I'm going to call this one new package outline. Now, uh, we have a, we have a very specific procedure we need to follow as far as saving this outline because we want to prepare this to be imported into Cinema 4D. And to do that, there's just a couple steps we need to follow. So once you hit save, you'll see this little drop down menu next to version. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select that drop down menu and let's go ahead and select Illustrator 8 and just click OK and OK. Now the reason we're selecting Illustrator 8 is because uh, for whatever reason Cinema 4D just it doesn't like any other versions of Illustrator. Illustrator 8 is that one version where uh, it works really well. So um, yeah, I mean that's really the only reason we're saving it is Illustrator 8. So, uh, so with, that, with that said, 
what we want to do next is let's go ahead and just delete our guides and also our first layer with our filled in package. We just want to delete those. We don't need those anymore. Uh, another reason is because when we import this file into Cinema 4D, if we don't delete those here, uh, Cinema 4D will recognize those objects as spline paths and it'll just muck up our scene and we can just save ourselves a huge headache by just deleting those in here. So let's go ahead and save that again. Click OK. And now we can jump into Cinema 4D. All right, so now that we're in Cinema 4D, let's go ahead and import our file. Uh, just real quick, um, I'm actually using version R16, but if you're using an earlier or later version of Cinema 4D, don't sweat it too much. Um, this process, it, it should work no matter what version of Cinema 4D you're using. So uh, with that said, I'm over here in my objects panel. I'm gonna come up here to file, merge objects, and I'm going to import our new package outline.ai, uh, which is essentially prepped for Cinema 4D. So I'm going to open that, and I'm, you'll get this little pop-up box that says Adobe Illustrator Import. Just make sure that Connect Splines is checked, and don't mess with the scale or anything. Just click OK. And what it'll do is it'll take our package, our file, and it'll kind of shove it off to the lower right. Now, sometimes it does that. I don't know why, but just select the file come to coordinates and just zero these out. We just want them to be, we want this file to be center. And there we go. Now with that selected, uh, let's come over here to our subdivision surface. Now click and hold this and come over here to extrude. And with the alt option key selected, hold that down and select extrude. And what it did was it nested our new package outline in our extrude nerves. Now right away though, you'll notice that didn't really do anything. And that's okay, uh, we just need to enable something. And we can do that by selecting our extrude nerves, come down here to our object tab, and enable hierarchical. And you can see now that that filled that in. But there's a few things we want to fix, like this is definitely a bit thick, we don't want it to be that thick. So you want to come over here to movement and where it says 20 centimeters, we just want to zero this out. So our package is paper thin. That's all we want. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and save this. I've already saved mine as new package and I saved that in the location where all of these other files are. So you can see that here. You can uh, save that however you like, but that's how I've saved mine. So. so now with that done, I'm actually going to rename our extrude nerve. So if you just double click it, you can name it to whatever you'd like. I'm going to name it to new package. And then in parentheses, I'm going to add unedited. Essentially what we're doing is we're going to create a duplicate of this file. And then we're going to minimize this, this unedited version, just in case we ever need to go back, we have something to go back to, and we don't need to go through this whole hassle again. So if you're on a Mac, go ahead and just pr press and hold the command key, and then click and drag, and that'll duplicate it. If you're on a PC, uh, you know, press and hold the control key, and then click and drag, and that'll duplicate it as well. So let's come back down to our new package unedited, and you see these two buttons here, these two circles, just go ahead and double click those so our file is off the scene, our original file. We don't need to mess with it anymore. And now I'm going to double click our copy and I'm just going to rename it so it just says new package. This is the file we're going to be working in. So now that we've done that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and right click our new package and come down here to select children and then press the C key. Now go ahead and repeat that step, right click, select children and press the C key again. And now right click again, but this time go down to uh, connect object plus delete. And what that did is it merged all of those individual components, the spline paths and the extrude nerves for the filler and it made it so it's one object but if you come over here to our surface polygons tab 
you can see that it retained all of the individual components still. And that's precisely what we want because we want to be able to edit the rotation axis of all of these individual components. But we'll get to that later. Let's go back over here to our model tab. And right now, we can actually go ahead and add a new material. So if you just come down here to create a new material, and I'm going to rename this to new package material. And then you just click and drag, and we can drop that on our new package object. But there's also one more thing I want to check before uh, I finish with this. So with our new package selected, let's come over here to Polygons, our Surface Polygons tab. And then if you're on a Mac, press Command-A. If you're on a PC, press Control-A. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that uh, we're not dealing with... Uh, we want to make sure that all of the surface the surface polygons are facing the right direction. So right away, I can see in mine that they're not. The ones in yellow are facing the right direction. The ones in blue, they're not facing the right direction. So we can resolve that by selecting all the ones that we saw that were in blue. Oh, this one was fine. And then once those are selected, uh, go ahead and right-click in the scene and come down here to reverse normals. And what that'll do is that'll reverse all of the surfaces. Now, if I command A or control A, uh, if you're on a PC, control A, and that'll select all of these. And now all of the surface normals are facing the same direction. This is definitely an important step when we start to rotate the axis point of the folds, because we want these to be rotating. We want everything to rotate in the same direction. So now that we've done that, we can go back up here to our model tab. And you know what? I think this is actually a good place to stop. So um, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to pick up uh, in, t in the second video. We're going to pick up where we left off here because I don't want this video to be too long. And uh, yeah, I guess if you have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and leave those in the comments section. And... I'll be sure to reply to any questions you have as promptly as I can. Otherwise, uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll be back with the second installment of our uh, package tutorial. So, uh, talk to you soon.